So in today's session, we're going to be talking about classic USAS DAT options, which include USA Con, USA Secure, and we'll talk a little bit about the Secure Report. First, let's take a look at the US, USAS DAT program. USAS DAT contains two programs which affect how other USAS programs operate. USA CON is the Configuration Data Maintenance Program, and USA Secure is the Security Profile Maintenance Program. USA CON is the very first program a district needs to run prior to processing. This program also provides a unique information regarding the district and how it will handle the various options USAS offers. The majority of this data contained in here are yes-no responses that need to be entered by the user to indicate how they want the USAS software to work for them. These options can only be modified by a person with group manager privileges. So here's a look at what USA Con looks like. The district information is at the top. District name, address, city, state, zip, and contact information. Below that is the current information. And in here, you'll see the one-digit code that indicates whether or not the SM2 and ADJUST programs have been run for a particular month. A zero indicates that ADJUST has not been run for the month and SM2 has not been run for the month. Um, the twos mean that SM2 and ADJUST have both been processed for the month, and the district has closed these months. You'll see a one in here for the month of March. This means that SM2 has been processed for the month, but ADJUST has not. So the district has not yet closed this month of March, and this district is currently processing in the month of March. Below that, you'll see the current fiscal year, and below that, the EMIS reporting year. Now, this field determines where the information is pulled from either the USAS account history file or the account master file. Over here is the highest number on file. Now, these are going to be the highest number that has been used by the district, used or issued by the district. So the first one is the highest receipt number on file. The next one is the highest ACTMOD transaction number. This field is optional and only modifiable if you have the used receipts in ACTMOD on the second screen on USA Con marked yes. If that flag is marked yes, it will keep track of the highest ACTMOD receipt transaction number that has been used for a modification, distribution, or a transfer. The next one is the highest vendor number on file, the highest memo vendor number on file, then the highest purchase order number, and the highest check number on file. You'll notice down here, this is screen one of two. So screen two of USA Con can, maintains information on five sets of data. Uh, you'll see USAS accounts. The next section is POs, requisitions, and checks. EIS information, optional programs, and miscellaneous. And as I said before, the data contained in here is mostly yes-no responses. Now, I won't go through all these options on this screen, too, because these options are provided in other trainings, and they are mentioned in the documentation. And of course, there's the F7 at the bottom for help. And let me show you that, what that looks like. So I'm going to X out of here and go into my reflections. And what I'm going to do is move my cursor up to one of the fields. And if you press an F7, you'll see this is the options available in here. Are appropriation accounts linked to budget account? Yes or no? Those are the options. So use the F7 help key if you're, never, if you're ever wondering what the options are. Okay, so going back to our PowerPoint slide. So this first option or question here is appropriate budget accounts linked. So as I said, are appropriation and budget accounts to be linked? If the value is yes or why, then this means that an appropriation account will be modified whenever an associated budget account is modified, and the appropriation and budgets will always balance. 
If the value is set to no, then the budgets and appropriations are not forced to balance each other. The next one down is cross-reference accounts. Will cross-reference codes be used? If answering yes, then the processing programs will prompt for a cross-reference code. This is a six-digit unique code that corresponds with the USAS budget or revenue code. The next one is negative cash balances. Will cash balances be allowed to go negative? So the options here are yes, Y, no, or N, or P for prompt. So if you select P, then it will prompt for negative cash balances every time that check proc is run and in payroll and other options in auto post. But it will allow for the negative cash balance. Track requisitioned amounts. You may choose to track amounts on open recs in the system. And these amounts will be stored on the accounts and used in calculating the current remaining balance for the accounts. A Y indicates that as recs are posted to the system, then amounts will be stored and used in determining available balances. If an N is chosen, indicating no, you do not want to track requisitioned amounts. The next one is check requisitioned amounts for requisitions. If the value is set to yes, then the REC amount will be taken into consideration in determining account balances as requisitions are created or modified. If the value is no, amounts associated with existing requisitions would not be included in determining remaining balances. Please note, if the setting on this flag is set to yes, the track, the track requisitioned amounts flag must also be set to yes. The next one I want to discuss is check requisitioned amounts for encumbrances. Yes means that this will track requisition amounts for encumbrances. Fatal errors may be encountered if the encumbrances associated with the purchase order will cause the remaining balance to go negative. If you choose a W in here, then it will give a warning and only a warning will be issued and this will cause the remaining balances to still go negative, but include a warning. If you set the flag to no or N, the requisition amount will not be included in determining available balances as purchase orders are created and modified. The next one I want to discuss is modify or delete requisitions. Do you want to allow requisitions to have been converted to purchase orders to be modified or deleted? Yes or no? Many POs on one rec. Do you want to allow PO screen and USAS Web PO to reuse a requisition on multiple purchase orders, yes or no? Negative checks permitted. Do you wish to allow negative checks to be created, yes or no? Collapse accounts on check stub. Do you wish to collapse accounts or amounts on check stubs when the PO invoice and accounts are the same and the descriptions are not being printed? Allow purchase order deletion. Now, deleting a purchase order does not allow a complete audit trail to be maintained. It also allows significant potentials for errors to occur, which can result in a mismatch between the district's records and what was actually printed and sent to the vendor. If you say yes, then the district will be allowed to delete purchase orders. If the flag is set to N or no, then the district will not be allowed to delete purchase orders and will have to invoice and cancel any not needed purchase orders. The allow PO deletion flag is only modifiable by someone with system manager privileges. And this is usually an ITC staff only that have that privilege. Now I won't go through the EIS options because those are covered in the EIS training. And the next one I wanna talk about is track amounts payable, yes or no. When entering yes, the system will ask you for a shipment received date to allow generating accounts payable reports. The next one we'll talk about is use receipts in ActMod. Do you wish to use receipt numbers, the highest receipt number on file for transactions entered in ActMod? If the flag is set to yes, then the transaction number will continue to default to the highest receipt number on file in ActMod and the highest ActMod transa transaction number will be meaningless. If you wish to use a separate range of transaction numbers for ActMod transactions, 
set the flag to no. ActMod will begin to default to the highest ActMod transaction number. So the next thing we're going to discuss here is the second program in USAS DAT, USA Secure. The USA Secure program contains options which only affect the USA screen programs. So this program allows a security profile for each username. This security profile can be set up or modified at any time while using the USAS software. The profile must be set up by the district treasurer or someone who has group manager privileges. A district can set up a username called default. If a username is not found, it will be granted the default access. The default access is a record the district sets up with the security profile information to be used when a username is not found. If neither a username nor the default record is found, then access to the given function or account is granted. An account filter can be used to control which accounts a user has authorization to read, modify, or add. The district can use the account filter option to filter out particular accounts so the user cannot post requisitions or purchase orders to them, or include particular accounts so that the user can post RECs and POs. This option also filters whether the username is allowed to read, modify, or add accounts in account screen. So here's an example of that, and in our example, the username is test. And if the flag is set to N or no, as in our example here, to add or modify vendors, then the system default for the add will not allow this individual to add or modify vendors. Just letting you know the system default here for the add modify vendors for all users, including rec only and you and read only users is yes. If you set the flag to no and modify the invoice to address on the vendor, then this person, the user will not be able to modify the invoice to address on the vendor. Allow negative budgets. The options here are yes, no, or a W. Yes would allow the negative budget, no will not allow, and W will allow but give a warning. Allow negative appropriation. The prompts here are N or W. No, do not allow, or W, give a warning, but go ahead and allow the posting. This inherit from field will allow you to set up users whose settings depend on another security record. And when you enter a name in the inherit field, then any fields in the USAS security that are left blank for that user will inherit the value of that field from the inherit user's security record. The inherit username can be an actual username or a default type username. Down here as part of the functions, I want to talk about this copy record. The S6 function key allows you to pull in information from a different username. This will allow you to easily set up users that are similar to another user without re-entering the information. This function will prompt you for a username to copy, and then you can make the necessary changes. It is important to note that any changes you make to the original username that you copied from will not have any effect on the users in which you copied the information into. This is screen two of USAS security profile. And on screen two, um, you'll set these flags in the read, modify, add, recs, or POs. So in our example here, the flag is set to yes and read. So the username will be able to view information regarding this budget account, 02 with an OPU of 002. If you grant access to the cash account, it gives them access to all underlying accounts and the same holds true for all underlying appropriation accounts. If any accounts should be excluded, you will need to list those accounts first and then list the accounts that you want to include. So if you want to exclude accounts that the user can see, for example, payroll accounts, you would list no's across for all of these 
read, mod, add, rec, and POs, and then list the salary account here. And then any accounts you want them to see, you would list below that. If you set the flag to no and modify, the user will not be able to modify the account records for the account code you entered. If the flag is set to no and add, then the user will not be able to add accounts for that, that account. If the flag is set to yes and recs and no and POs as is in our example, then the user will not be able to post requisitions. Or, I'm sorry, the user will be able to post requisitions but will not be able to post POs to the account code you enter. If you leave the read, modify, add, rec, or PO field blank for the account code entered, the USAS security profile will default to no's. If the account filter screen is left blank for a username, the user will have full access to all accounts while still keeping in consideration their system privs such as read only and requisition only. That means someone with rec only cannot post POs. Now the last thing I want to discuss in here are wildcards that can be used in the USAS security profile instead of the actual account digits. Um, the first one is an asterisk that represents multiple digits or alphabetical characters. The next one is the percent sign that represents a single digit or alphabetical character. The pound sign represents a single digit. And an at symbol represents a single alphabetical character. So I'll show you those in the next slide. And this is not a USAS security profile, but it's a report called ActSum that we were running. And we want to include this account with a wild card that represents multiple digits or alphabetical characters in the Special Cost Service Center beginning with nine. The next one represents just a single digit or alphabetical character. Uh, so you'll often see Special Cost Service Center with a code of 919A or 919S or a numeric digit. The next one is the pound side. It represents just a single digit and the at symbol represents a single alphabetical character. The last thing I want to talk about is the secure report and what it does is it generates a listing showing the security profile user information and account filter data from the USAS Data USA secure screen. When running the report, the system gives you the option to search for all users for a particular district or for a specific username. So this, this listing is at least two usernames and it gives whether or not they're able to read, modify, create accounts, POs, and RECs, and the funds on that person's USAS security profile. Now, if there are no account filters entered for a user, then you'll see these question marks. This is another example over here in the upper right-hand corner. These question marks will appear in the object, subject, and OPU account fields if a username has inherited the settings from another user. A name will appear in the inherited field, and all inherited fields will remain blank along with question marks appearing under the account filter fields. 